Hi guys, today I'm going to go over something a lot of IT infrastructures are implementing and that is a cluster of machines offering the service. So instead of having one machine for one service, you have a cluster of nodes offering the service so that we have a close to highest 100% availability for those really mission critical services. But not only do you need to know that all your nodes are up and your service is up, you need to know that they're actually working together and that your services are being offered to your end users, your customers. So today I'm going to go over how you can use something like Nagios XI or Nagios Core to actually intelligently monitor your cluster and monitor all the nodes in your cluster as well as the service that your cluster is offering. So just keep watching, I'll show you how easy and quick it is to do. The first step is adding the host, each node in your cluster, to the Nagio server as clients. Uh, for a detailed explanation of how to do this, I'll link another video here, but it's essentially adding the client configuration and modifying the nagios.conf file. So here's our client configuration. We put in our host name, our alias, our address. For services, I left ping, but it depends on what you want to monitor. So in this case, I left ping and I want to add the service that is part of the cluster. So later on I'll show how to add DNS to the configuration file. So in this example we're doing name servers running binds. So we have NS1 and NS2. So these are our two clients. We're going to, once we have the configuration files, we're going to add it to the nagios.conf file on the server so it starts monitoring our new uh, nodes in our cluster. You might have already done this if you just want to monitor the performance of your nodes before without monitoring specifically the cluster, the service the cluster is offering. So you might already have this step done. But if you have not, be sure to do this step first. So you can copy the another line of the configuration file for the system path. I usually always keep it in the same path. It doesn't necessarily have to be there, but it's just a good practice. So we put in the path and then the specific client configuration file, so NS1 and then NS2. Once we have modified the configuration files as needed, we're going to go ahead and restart the Nagios service. So service Nagios restart should do it, and it'll go ahead and read the new configuration files you just added. So now we can go to the Nagios client interface, I'm sorry, the Nagios web interface, and check out our new clients that are listed. So we can click on host, and you'll see that it's pending. It'll take a few minutes to update, so it's going to show you the IP address, you just kind of hover. And again, a few minutes to update, and then we can go ahead and check the service. So right now, it'll just have the ping service. So we're going to go through and add our new service that's, that our cluster is responsible for. So in this example, it's going to be DNS and bind, or DNS using bind. So if we go back to that system configuration file, we can do our modifications there. But I usually like to know that my client is first configured correctly, so this is a good step to just for troubleshooting purposes to make sure this step has been completed properly, that your client is updating, and any service you define, either like disk usage or system, like memory usage, file system usage, processing utilization, you go ahead and monitor that and then add what the cluster service is later. So I usually do it in this order, just so you can, for troubleshooting purposes, it's a little cleaner. So we're gonna go back and now let's take a look at our DNS service. So we're going back to our objects folder here we will find the commands file. So we're going to define the command that will run when we call exactly the check cluster plugin. So I should go to where, um, about the bottom of where the commands are defined, and I'm going to define my own command. So I'm going to do define command, give it a cluster name, and this one we're going to use, call it check DNS. Um, and then we're going to use the check cluster plugin to check DNS. So we're going to name it our command underscore name be check underscore DNS. Now we're going to define the command that runs when we call this command. So we're going to say command underscore line and now we're going to use uh, the plugin. I, you can either provide the entire path to your plugin or you can use the variable user one dollar sign. So that will point to the same thing. So either way this will work. Um, it might be cleaner just to use the variable but essentially the variables is pointing to this path. Now part of the argument if you do the check DNS you're going to see that there is a arguments that you can specify. If you just do check DNS hyphen hyphen help it'll give you an explanation of what the arguments are um, but in this case it's just minus H the, the name name we want to check and minus S 
is the host name or the client server we're going to check from. So in this case, it would be NS1 and NS2. So that's essentially what we're going to define here. Now let's go back to the client configuration files, and now we're going to define the service we want to check that's part of the cluster, and that's going to be our DNS check, so, or check underscore DNS. So you can either clean up if you don't want to check all the other services that's it's not required for whatever reason you don't need to know. You can just delete it here. You can leave ping if you want. That's fine too. So we're going to define a service that's going to call our check DNS command that we just defined in the check in the commands.com file. So we're going to define service. We're going to use generic service host name and service descriptions DNS. Now that DNS string is actually important. We'll be using that later when we define our check cluster. So make sure you specify the correct uh, service description name here and remember what it is so we can call it back later. So now we have the command check underscore command and it's DNS. So you don't want to repeat the exact same steps in both um, clients. So NS1 and NS2. So go into ns2.com file and do the exact same thing. You define the service using the command we just created, check DNS. If we take a look at now the web interface, you'll see that the services we have defined are there. So DNS and ping. And you just want to make sure that they both state OK before we go through and add our cluster. So if you click on details, DNS, and if you click on DNS, it'll give you some more details about that specific service. Now let's go back to our command file. It's in our objects folder. So we're going to find a new command, and this is going to be a command to check the cluster. So not just one single service, but many services together. So it really can be any service you define. It's really flexible plugin that this is how this works because using the cache history of not use cache history of the status of that service to actually define the status of the cluster. So let's go ahead and call it check service cluster. So we're going to define what service we're going to be using here. So if we go define command, we're going to call the command name check underscore service underscore cluster. And now we're the command underscore line. It's a command the plugin will call. And the check cluster plugin is actually sure to be there during your installation. So it's not something in addition you have to download from the Nagios Exchange site. So we're going to do the check underscore cluster and we're going to define it as a service. So hyphen hyphen service. Mine L is a label. So we're going to label um, this service. Minus W is the warning threshold. And then the minus C is the critical threshold. Okay, and then minus D is what we're going to define the data, how we're collecting the data to determine if the service is up in our cluster. So we're going to separate it by commas. So now we're going to go over and look at another file and we're going to pass arguments to this plugin. Back in the objects folder, we're going to have um, made a copy of one of the client. Uh, configuration files. It doesn't have to be NS1, the ones just defined, but I just chose that. So it just makes it easier as a starting off template. So we're going to define our cluster client. So this is just going to have, it's going to have a host name. So this host name could be interesting. It could be the uh, DNS entry that you have associated with the virtual IP address that is pointing to your cluster of service, depending on what kind of service you're offering. Some people might have like a floating IP address. You can actually define that here. Or you could specify one of the nodes in the cluster as well. Um, so depending on what kind of service you might want to put your floating IP address or your virtual IP address here as well. Some clusters for high availability have a bouncing IP address between hosts. So if we're going to define the service here, we're going to define it using define service. Within our service, we're going to use the local service. So this is a service template. Um, it's already predefined. You could have a customized service template, that's fine. Next we're going to define our host name. So our host name is NS Cluster, and then Service Description, and that's going to be how it appears on the Nagios web interface under Services. It's the name of the service. So in this case, we would call it Cluster, DNS Cluster. And this is the really most important part, is the check command and how you pass arguments. It's a very syntax-specific way of passing arguments into the check command. Um, if you notice before, we had the minus L, the minus W, the minus D is really the most important to how the data is being passed. So we're going to say check service underscore cluster, which we define in the commands.com file. 
The exclamation point separate the arguments that we define in the configuration.com file. So first, remember it was the minus L, which is the label. So this is the label that's going to appear, and we're going to call it DNS. And followed by that, we call it the thresholds. So we're going to specify the thresholds for when it should be warning and when it should be critical. So this is really defines the number of hosts that it will tolerate being down. So if you have a small cluster, in this case I have two, so if zero is good, one is critical, so zero, in this case zero is a warning, um, and one is critical, we obviously want just one. But if you have a larger cluster of maybe five nodes or six nodes, you could have a higher warning threshold, of course. It could be two nodes down and your cluster is still up. Or critical is four of the five cluster nodes are down, then you have a more critical state in your cluster. So, of course, this is depending and varies from cluster to cluster. The zero and the one can be changed from warning is zero in this case, and then one is critical, so you could change it for your environment. So now we're going to define our service state, and we're going to give it a host, NS1. It's going to be the first host, and then we're going to define the service in NS1 that's going to be checked. And that's where I remember you said, remember the string, because it's important when we use it later. So that string has to match the string here, where it says DNS. All right, so that whole argument from the dollar sign to the end of the dollar sign, that's one argument, okay? That's one part of the data stream. So now we're going to separate it by a comma. So this is the rest of that same argument. And again, you notice the dollar sign service state NS1, that's the second node of our cluster. And again, the service we're checking on there. So Nagios is taking the information of the service state for NS1, the service DNS, and if Nagios feels is that it's okay, that it has checked and its status is okay, then it's passing that information to the check, uh, check cluster plugin. So it determines the state of the cluster from the previously cached information that we're passing here through the minus D option of the check cluster plugin. So if you have a larger cluster, you go ahead and continue adding additional uh, parts to this argument, separating it by a comma. And then if you have five nodes, for example, you go ahead and put in five nodes and just separate it by a comma, and it will check each node for you. Now the Service ID is actually a Nagios macro. So this is designed, so before Nagios process this command, it actually will go out and look for the service ID of that host name and DNS and replace that value there. Um, so this has happened before, so that is what's filling in there. So the service ID is a keyword or a pre-configured macro in the Nagios um, monitoring software. Nagios XI Nagios core. So you could be able to fill that in the same way as users one, it does a path. So kind of similar idea. Now if we go back to our Nagios installation folder, we're going to go to that Nagios.com file and we're going to add the client we just defined, our clusterclient.com file. So we're going to add it to our definitions of servers to be monitored. So we can go ahead and copy that first initial part of the path and just change the file name to right, clusterclient.com. We're going to restart the service, and now we should be able to see it on our web interface. This service now you restart. If everything's good with the configurations you made, you should see it listed once you refresh the page. And you know it's going to say pending until it goes ahead and checks the system. It might just be a couple minutes. And if you look under status, you're going to see our DNS cluster. And now you see that it's OK. Two OK, zero warning, zero unknown, zero critical. So if that's the number of machines that's coming back with the service, DNS service, in the OK state. Now, the best thing about this plugin is really how flexible it is. Because it is using Nagios cache of the service, you could actually customize this cluster check for really any service out there. And also, in my next video, I'm going to go over how to create like one-line uh, Nagios commands, one-liners, that you can do quick checks. So if you're for a reason, it, your high availability cluster is for a service that is not easy to check like DNS is by just issuing like a, a a dig or an NS lookup that you could actually use um, a one line command to actually check your cluster. So I'll go over that maybe in our next video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this and um, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, I will see you guys next time and subscribe to get updates. So bye, guys.